Calico. This week on Sport Fishing, we're fishing aboard the El Dorado out of Long Beach, California. We're at San Clemente Island, right here. And I just got bit right now. And what we're gonna be doing today is looking for rockfish, calico bass, and if we get really lucky, maybe a yellowtail. I got a little fish going right here. It's fishing a bucktail with some squid. Let's see what this is. Probably a little rockfish. Here he comes. Yeah, Johnny Bass. So this is what we have in store today. Fishing uh, on the bottom and throwing different baits. Here's a little bucktail right here that that Johnny Bass ate. And that's what we'll be doing. We'll be on the El Dorado here at San Clemente Island looking to catch more rockfish, some calico bass, and maybe a yellowtail or two. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah! This is what fish is like. I have been fishing along the Pacific Coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Day. First of the day. There you go. We got a better fish on here. We right. light tackle. salad with that. <laughs> there we go. Just fishing that bucktail right on the bottom with the live squid pinned on. See what I got coming up here. There it is right here. A little tree fish. That's a B-52 bucktail. It had a squid on there and that little rockfish came up and ate it. Little guy, I let him go. Look, you can see right here these little teeth marks. Either end, probably a lingcod or something tried to eat it. But he got away. We'll let him go. That one up hole. Absolutely. <laughs> this is this is Dennis. He's one of our regulars. Caught a nice white fish. Hasn't been out with us for a few years. Nice to have him back. But that's a nice quality fish. Good job, man. Nice to be here. 
We're going to take a little break from the action here aboard the Eldorado and go to the tackle box and show you the gear that we're using for today's trip. This week in the tackle box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. We're fishing with live squid. And it's the first time in a few years we've had live squid on the boat because the last few years with El Nino, the water's been so warm that the squid hasn't floated here in Southern California. But for this trip, we have plenty of live squid and there's a couple of ways you can fish them. Now, if you want to use a hook and a hook works really good, I really recommend you use something like this made by Mustad. It has a long shank on it and it's called a grip hook for a couple reasons. It has this little device right here that really holds on to your bait and you can pin the live squid on there. It'll hold it on there better. What I really like is this long shank. That long shank lets you pin the squid on three or four times. That way when the little perch or small calicos are picking at it, they don't pull the bait off and you still have it there when a yellow tail or a big calico swims by, you're gonna catch a fish on this. Now another great way to fish for them is with a bucktail. Now with the bucktails, you can go anywhere from a half ounce to a four ounce model. The only difference is if the current is ripping, you gotta go to heavier weight. And if you're fishing in deeper water, you're gonna want the heavier bucktail. The other time you might wanna switch bucktails from a half ounce to a four ounce is if there's white sea bass and yellowtail around, you're gonna want that larger hook. With the live squid, I like the red and white, works really good for variety fish. But if you're just targeting calico bass, there's nothing like green and yellow bucktail with a squid on there, either strips of squid or a hole pinned on squid. You're not gonna be disappointed. These work really, really good. And as far as fishing a bucktail, you can cast them out, bounce them back to you, or you can just drop them straight down at the boat, lift them up off the bottom. You wanna get them off the bottom about five, six feet and let them flutter up and down. As they're fluttering up and down, the fish will see them and they'll come by and bite them. If you leave your squid, I don't care if it's on a hook or a bucktail, laying on the bottom, all you're gonna catch is bat rays and sand sharks. All right, well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. fishing here at San Clemente Island today. We're up the back of the island here, just a little bit below Lost Point. And we're fishing a couple bottom grabbers. We happen to have a nice little sculpin here. We measure it out about 12 and a half inches. Give them a little bit of a haircut here. The spines on the sculpin, the dorsal spines have already trimmed off here, but most of the spines that we have on here um, are pretty poisonous. If they prick you, they'll inject a little bit of venom. And depending on how allergic you are to them, depends on how bad the, inje uh, the infection can be. Um, some guys just get a bad burning sensation and it irritates them. Some guys can go into a, um, into a little bit of a shock. So, trying to lessen the uh, chances of being stung and pricked. We give them a little haircut before we bag them up. And that would be the California Scorpion Rockfish, also known as a scorpion. So we have a little ocean whitefish here. The thing about an ocean whitefish is they have a, a gill plate here that's actually razor sharp. And if you're not careful, you grab it the wrong way and it'll slide you open. So, oh, oh no! This guy, we're gonna like go back. Yeah. Come back here, come back here, come back here. Oh, big sheep head, leave it there. Leave it there. Big sheep head. Hold it up. Yeah. This is Jose. He's one of our volunteers with the Youth Foundation. Came out fishing with us today. Got this nice, big, beautiful sheephead. Nice fish, Jose. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're going to take a little break from the action here aboard the Eldorado at San Clemente Island. And we're going to go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious fish we're catching today. Hey guys, today in the galley, we're in San Diego, California at the patio. And it's located in Mission Hills, right at the Crest Hill, right on the border there. Yeah, right much. right on the border, yeah. We're right, literally, you can walk down there, it's right there. And we're with Chef Will, he's a head chef here, executive chef. 
And Chef Will, thanks for inviting thanks us over. Thanks, Roxanne. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So what do you have in store for us today? Uh, today we're going to do a little local halibut crudo. <laughs> so this is our local halibut here. So you want to cut it to, to the point where it's about a quarter inch thick. You want to have a little bit of bite to it. If it gets too thin, it starts to fall apart on you. And it becomes a little bit more difficult to put it onto the plate. So about a quarter inch thick there. All right. So what we're doing here is really just going to Put all the fish around, no, no rhyme or reason, kind of just throwing it all around. You know, the way I like to play it is a lot of randomness. Uh, you don't want to kind of put it all together and make it look uniform. Um, it just adds the, uh, to the accent of the plate, really. So these are Kara Kara oranges here. So they're, they're crossed between grapefruit and an orange itself. So got a little bitterness and a little sweetness as well from the grapefruit. Um, and we're just going to put these on our plate. Again, you know, we want to have about one per fish, you know, kind of having them all mixed around, no rhyme, no reason to the plating of this. You know, we try to keep it as random as possible. So those are our oranges there. <clears throat> These are red Fresno chilies. Do a little thin slice them. You don't want to be too thick again. You know, it's all about textures and everything like that. So here I took the seeds out of these so the spices aren't too overwhelming. So here we have a little pick pickled shallots here. So very simple pickling liquid, uh, just to get that little biteness from the onion away. Um, and we're just gonna put these around as well. Um, all about textures here, you know. The, the fish has got a little bit of softness to it. The, the peppers have a little bit of a crunch. The onions have a crunch. All about textures. So you wanna put a good amount of salt on all these. What's the name of that salt? Fleur de sel. Fleur de sel. So I mean, people use Maldon. You know, I like using Fleur de sel. So you wanna get even the citrus, all the fish, you know, a good amount of salt. All right. Can you find that at most markets? You, you can or? find this at you know, any of the supermarkets, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, any of those places really. They'll have it. Uh, and you'll see there's all different types of salt. But usually you want to stick with kosher for cooking uh, and then these types of salts to finish with for something like this as well. Uh, so this is a little vinaigrette I made from the Kara Kara orange juice as well. So we took, this, took the fruit out and then we kept some of the juice to make a vinaigrette. Um, so what we're going to do here is put a couple of dots all around. And we're going to finish it off with a little bit of micro cilantro. So cilantro obviously comes in a little bit of a bigger form here. This right. is the micro version. Uh, kind of, you mostly just use these for garnishing, and that's really about it. I don't think I've ever seen micro cilantro. Uh, it, it's got an intense cilantro flavor for sure. Cool. Um, so that's that. And then we'll finish it with some really good extra virgin olive oil. Last but not least, a little chili oil. So being that we took the seeds out of the Fresnos, the spice isn't are really there. So this will kind of give us a little bit of spice, tie it all together. Cool. So this is our halibut crudo. Well, Chef, this looks delicious. How do you recommend do you take all those ingredients yeah, you together? Can, you can go for a, oh, should we get a fork? <laughs> nah, that's all right. All right, yeah, just go no for a one, one, one bite at all. And you kind of want to get all the textures in there, get all the fish, the pepper, the orange. It should all work in harmonious. That is so good that I have to make sure it was that good. Have one more. <laughs> mm. What do you think? It's deceiving. It looks so simple, but simple. with all the different textures and flavors, yeah. that is so good. That's really good. There you go. Well, thank you, Chef. Yeah, no problem. Then. So Thanks we're at the patio, and we're in Mission Hills District of San Diego, right on the border of Crestline. And it's a neat location. Great dishes, lots of different seafood dishes. Yep. Thanks for helping us Thanks out. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. If people want to find you, find you on Facebook? Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram. We're just trying to get a Twitter going. We have everything on social media. So check us out on there. All right. Well, yeah. thanks a lot, Chef. Thanks, thanks a lot. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Gotta love it. Wonderful weather. Up. These guys got to be 14, guys, so this could quite a little too small. Let's check it out. All right, we're about a half inch short, bud. Off rail, guys. 
First yellow tail of the season for me. Well, no. Uh. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Wow, okay, that might make one dinner, maybe a dinner and a half. <laughs> Skipper just made a move. All day it's been very cold, windy, overcast. We slid over to the front side of the island right now, and it looks like it's a new day. And it's the same day, just a little bit later in the day, but conditions are changing. That's part of ocean fishing, is conditions change all the time, you have to adapt to it. So we're gonna fish over here for a little bit, See if we can catch a couple more yellowtail, some more calico bass. We'll see how we do. Two bucktail. <laughs> Got it. There we go. Working that bucktail here at the front side of San Clemente Island. 30 pound test spectra. Let's see what this is. Hoping it's a calico bass. Let's see what it is here. There it is. Color. Nice bass. Nice bass. There we go. Nice calico bass. Had to work them out of the kelp, and uh, that's part of the reason I'm fishing straight spectra, because we're really close to the island here, and fishing straight spectra, 30 pound spectra, and there's a B52 bucktail right there. Let's see if I can get them out. There it is. B52 bucktail, one ounce, and 
nice, big, beautiful calico bass. All right, we're gonna release this fish right now, and when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. So I'm working this bucktail right here in front of the island, getting bit, getting bit. Here we go. Just working it, a little white bucktail, one ounce bucktail with the whole squid on there. And I'm also using 30 pound spectra because we have so much kelp around here. Here comes my fish. What is it? It's a calico bass. Here's my calico. Just got him on that all white bucktail B52 with the whole squid and you can catch fish like this. So for this week's tip of the week I want to talk to you a little bit about how I'm catching these calico bass today with the light squid and the bucktails. First let's release this guy. And this week's tip would be when you're fishing in a heavy kelp area like here at San Clemente don't be afraid to go all braid. I got 30 pound braid here with a one ounce B52 bucktail and you can fish a strip squid or today we're lucky we got live squid. So I'm painting on a whole live squid catching these bass. So that's this week's tip. When you get in a situation like this with lots of kelp, just go ahead and fish a straight braid. You don't need any mono, no fluorocarbon, straight braid. You can cut through the kelp when you hook those big fish and it makes it easier to bring it in. Well, I want to thank the crew aboard the El Dorado. Our captain, TJ, did a great job. Whole crew was really wonderful and we had lots of fun fishing with them. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing. <laughs>